Good afternoon. Welcome to God's house as we worship and observe the second Sunday of Pentecost. And as we do so, we're going to see the difference between the wise man who builds his house on the rock and the foolish man who builds his house on sand. And so we look at our theme for worship, which is the Word of God is our rock solid foundation for the holy ministry. As we worship, we'll follow the order of service, of common service without Holy Communion. And so let us begin with our first hymn, which is hymn 735, Speak, O Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. For our confession this afternoon, let us use verses 1 and 2 of Lord, we confess our numerous faults. Confess our numerous faults, how great our guilt has been, how vain and foolish all our thoughts, how 
God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given us his one and only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for all our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ, and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the peace of forgiveness, let us join in singing verses 3 through 6. Is not by works of righteousness which our own hands have done, but we are saved by God's free grace abounding through His Son. Tis from the mercy of our God that all our hopes begin. Tis by the water and the blood our souls are saved from sin. Tis through the purchase of his death who hung upon the tree to breathe on such dry bones as we raised from the dead we live on new and justified by grace we shall appear in glory to and see our Father The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you rule over all things in wisdom and kindness. Take away everything that may be harmful and give us whatever is good. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The Word of God is rock solid. 1 Kings chapter 22, beginning at verse 10. Dress in their royal robes, the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat king of Judah, were sitting on their thrones at the threshing floor by the entrance of the gate of Samaria with all the prophets prophesying before them. Now Zedekiah, son of Canaanah, had made iron horns, and he declared, This is what the Lord says. With these you will gore the Arameans until they are destroyed. All the other prophets were prophesying the same thing. Attack Ramoth Gilead and be victorious, they said, for the Lord will give it into the king's hand. The messenger who had gone to summon Micaiah said to him, Look, as one man the pro other prophets are predicting success for the king, let your word agree with theirs and speak favorably. But Micaiah said, As surely as the Lord lives, I can tell him only what the Lord tells me. When he arrived, the king asked him, Micaiah, shall we go to war against Ramoth Gilead, or shall I refrain? Attack and be victorious, he answered, for the Lord will give it into the ha king's hands. The king said to him, 
How many times must I make you swear to tell me nothing but the truth in the name of the Lord? Then Micaiah answered, I saw all Israel scattered on the hills like sheep without a shepherd, and the Lord said, These people have no master. Let each one go home in peace. The king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, Didn't I tell you he never prophesies anything good about me, but only bad? Micaiah continued, Therefore hear the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne with all the hosts of heaven standing around him on his right and on his left. And the Lord said, Who will entice Ahab into attacking Ramoth Gilead and going to his death there? One suggested this and another that. Finally, a spirit came forward, stood before the Lord and said, I will entice him. By what means, the Lord asked? I will go out and be a lying spirit in the mouths of all his prophets, he said. You will succeed in enticing him, said the Lord. Go and do it. So now the Lord has put a lying spirit in the mouths of all these prophets of yours. The Lord has decreed disaster for you. Then Zedekiah, son of Canaan, went up and slapped Micaiah in the face. Which way did the spirit of, from the Lord go when he went from me to speak to you, he asked. Micaiah replied, you will find out on the day you go to hide in an inner room. The king of Israel then ordered, take Micaiah and send him back to Ammon, the ruler of the city, and Joash, the king's son, and say, this is what the king says, put this fellow in prison. And give him nothing but bread and water until I return safely. Micaiah declared, If you ever return safely, the Lord has not spoken through me. Then he added, Mark my words, all you people. This is the word of God. For our psalm this afternoon, we will sing the refrains, but we will speak the verses responsibly. People, hear my teaching. I will utter things from of old. We will not hide them from our children. decreed statutes for Jacob. So the next generation would know them. Then they would put their trust in God. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Your word is a lamp to my feet, and a light for my path. Our second lesson, which will also serve as the basis of our sermon from Second Peter chapter 1, Above all, you must understand that no prophecy of Scripture came about by the prophet's own interpretation, for prophecy never had its origin in the will of man, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. But there were also false prophets among the people, just as there will be false teachers among you. They will secretly introduce destructive heresies, even denying the sovereign Lord who brought who bought them, bringing swift destruction on themselves. Many will follow their shameful ways and will bring the way of truth into disrepute. In their greed, 
these teachers will exploit you with stories they have made up. Their condemnation has long been hanging over them, and their destruction has not been sleeping. This is the word of our Lord. Alleluia! Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light for my path. Alleluia! Let us join in singing hymn 293, God's Word is Our Great Heritage. God's Word is our great heritage and shall be ours forever to spread its light from age to age shall be our chief endeavor through life our way in death it is our stay Lord grant while worlds endure we keep his teachings pure throughout all generations Please stand. Our gospel lesson is the gospel according to Matthew chapter 7. Glory be to you, O Lord. The word of God is rock solid. Watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ferocious wolves. By their fruit you will recognize them. Do people pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Likewise, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus, by their fruit, you will recognize them. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the stream rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall, because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. When Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teaching because he, has taught, he taught as one who had authority and not as their teachers of the law. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise be to you, O Join with me now as we confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. 
Amen. You may be seated, and let's join to sing hymn 291, which is, We Have a Sure Prophetic Word. Grace, mercy, and peace are yours. From God, our Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The word of God for our consideration today is from our second lesson from the book of 2 Peter, chapters 1 and 2, my dear brother and sister in the Lord. It was almost 15 years ago to the day I had just gotten married we had just returned from our honeymoon. We have just moved down to Mequon so that I could start moving into our new apartment for the first time as a married couple, and I had to face the realities of life. Time to find a job. Can't live on the wedding money forever. And so that's what I did. I canvassed the entire city of Mequon, trying to find anything that was nearby so that I could have a job that after school I could then go to my job and then go to my home and not have to drive all over Timbuktu. So I started at a place where I thought I had a really great chance of getting a job, and that was at the Hardware Hank, right on the corner of Main and, oh, whatever street goes to seminary there. And as I went to Hardware Hank, I went inside, and my mom and dad always taught me, if you want to get a job, Try to make sure that you either get the manager or the owner so that you can actually make an impression on them as you're getting the application. And so that's what I did. I asked if the manager or the owner was there, and sure enough, he was. And I was able to tell him all about my background at Ace Hardware in Appleton, how I worked there for all through college and high school, and how I had a good knowledge of all the things in hardware and in the rental space. And this man looked at me and said, you know what? You seem to be the guy. And so we discussed our employment details. He held out his hand and he said, you got my word, you've got a job. I was excited, you know. That seemed like a pretty good deal. I'd just gone out, I'd just found a job, just got married, all these new things, all these great things. And then I went home and all of a sudden, my phone was ringing in the other room and I didn't pick it up. And all of a sudden, I went and I listened to the voicemail and said, Hi, Matt. I don't know if you remember me, but I'm the owner at Hardware Hank. I really hate to do this, but 
I'm not going to hire you. Have you ever had someone go against their word, break their promise? Doesn't feel good, does it? In fact, I'm guessing if somebody ever went against their word with you, you still understand and realize that feeling, even to this day, where it kind of left a bad taste in your mouth, you understand it just was one of those raw deals, and it makes you kind of angry. And that's why, as we look at our lesson for today, we're contrasting man's word versus God's word. Surely, anybody here has probably had a promise broken to them once or twice in their lives, and even when it happens to us and we try to think, now I'm never going to do that to someone else, no matter how hard we try, there are still going to be times when even we go against our word and our promises are then broken. But not God's word. Not God's word, because as we see in our lesson for today, God's word is unique. Although it was penned down onto paper by men, there were no human contributions to the word of God. The God's word is, just as it sounds, it is God's word for us. And so as we take a look at our lesson for today, we're going to see how God's Word is rock solid for the very reason that there is no input by human beings and it is solely powered by the Lord God Almighty. Now, 2 Peter would be the Apostle Peter's second book to the churches in Asia Minor. If you can think of Asia Minor, this is a large, large landmass. And so it's not specifically given to one church, but all of the churches in that area. And so as you read through First and Second Peter, you're going to see how he really doesn't address individual problems that certain congregations are facing, but instead he focuses on general issues that the entire Christian church in that area were dealing with. And so you can see in our section, he's dealing with the notion of false prophets that are popping up and what prophets, false prophets are willing to do and how their desires and how their, their strategy is always to serve themselves. Our lesson begins in verse 20. Above all, you must understand that no prophecy of Scripture came about by the prophet's own interpretation. For prophecy never had its origin in the will of man, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. When we take a look at those words, it's clearly showing us that God wants you and I to know the words that we read from his word, they're reliable. That we can be certain that what is given to us in his word is something we don't have to doubt, we don't have to question, we don't have to wonder. And so we look at those words of God which show us that the prophecy of God never had its origin in the will of man. The prophets didn't just sit around one day and think to themselves, I wonder what I'm going to write today. But instead, they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. The Apostle Peter is merely showing us what you have learned previously, and that is what is called verbal inspiration. You see, the prophets didn't write down their own words but the Lord God gave them the words for them to write down. Clearly, men did write these words. The Apostle Peter wrote these words. The Apostle Paul wrote letters to churches throughout, whether it was Cor Corinth or Rome or throughout the Christian world. Clearly, men were the ones with the quills and the paper. But it was the Spirit of God carrying them along and giving them the words to write down. But it's here that the devil likes to step in 
and likes to begin to sow his seeds of doubt. Because any one of us here today who has ever had to take notes in a classroom and we try to hear what the professor says or hear what our teacher says and jot it down as close as possible, it's almost inevitable, isn't it, that we start putting it into our own words? It's almost inevitable for us to all of a sudden begin to interpret what the person is saying and kind of change and adapt things ever so slightly. And that's what the devil tempts us to think. The devil in this world wants us to think that the Word of God is not rock solid. There are cracks all over it. And they want us to doubt it based on the fact that men actually did write the Word. And the devil wants to then have us think that if men wrote the Word, they had to have shared their own ideas. They had to have put in their own interpretation of these things. They had to have done it. The only problem is this. When it comes to man's writing, especially in such a complex book as you see in the Holy Bible, it would have fallen in on top of itself like a card house. Because all of Scripture is connected. All of Scripture complements, interprets itself, in, and helps us understand the rest of it. We don't have Scripture in one place telling us to go right, and then in another place, go left. We don't have the Scriptures tell us in one place, this is what's true, and then all of a sudden, in another, have the complete opposite. No. All of Scripture is in agreement with the rest of Scripture. Because the prophecy was never coming from human hearts and minds, but it was given from God to mankind so that man would be able to understand what God wanted him to do, and then we could stand firm on the rock-solid foundation of God's Word because it doesn't change, it doesn't shift, it doesn't adapt, it is and remains solid for all time. And if you want to take a look at the chief difference between the rock-solid word and what happens when you don't have the solid word, take a look at the second portion of our lesson from verses 1, 2, and 3 from chapter 2. But there are also false prophets among the people, just as there will be false teachers among you. They will secretly introduce destructive heresies and denying the sovereign Lord who bought them, bringing swift destruction on themselves. Many will follow their shameful ways and will bring the way of truth into disrepute. In their greed, these teachers will exploit you with stories they have made up. Their condemnation has been changing or hanging over them, and their destruction has not been sleeping. God's word is rock solid because it is not something that is serving him. You can tell the difference between the true prophet of God and the false prophet. One is in it to serve God and to direct people to know what God says. The other, the false prophet, is looking to serve only himself and looking to feed his own ego, looking to feed his own success story. You see, there is a complete opposite motivation between the true prophet and the false prophet. What we see in the Word is that the false prophet is always looking out for himself, not the people, not to give them what they need, not to show them where to go, not to tell them all that God has said. But instead, as we heard in our Old Testament lesson, the false prophets are doing what they would like to do. They want to sow a different story. And by doing so, leading many people astray. 
When we look at what it means that the word of God is rock solid, it is truly amazing that the man by the name Peter is the one writing this. His name is the rock, if you look at his name, which is derived from the noun. And then he looks at this in the same light as the man who hears Jesus tell us, be a wise man and put these words of mine into practice by building your house on the rock, not on the sand. Because as we see in our gospel lesson, if you build your house on the sure and solid foundation of the word of God, it doesn't matter what the devil hurls against it. It doesn't matter what the world does to you. It will beat and try to drive your house away, but it won't. Because your house's foundation is on the rock the solid foundation of the world. But notice what happens if we do follow the false prophets. You can surely see the difference in our lesson, can't you? The true prophet is rock-solid word. The false prophet, that is the sinking sand. That is, when the, everything beats against that house, it begins to shift, creak, and crash. Our Lord Jesus, however, he shows us the certainty that we need. Because we have doubted the word. We have looked at the word and have wondered, is this true? We have questioned the interpretations that we have of the word because it, it would be easier if we could change them ever so slightly in some way, but that is not then God's words. Those would be our words. And we then need to repent. We need to repent of all the times where we misrepresented the word, where we took the word and made it something that it was not, or when we doubted what the word said. And that's where our Lord Jesus Christ looks to you and me and says, you are forgiven. Your sins are are washed away. You are made clean. Because that is why he came into this world to be the perfect lamb of sacrifice. That is why he came into this world to shed his blood for our sins so that he could show us how we can rely on him always. Because he is the source of all the promises of the word of God. He shows us how the word is rock solid because he fulfills all of those prophecies, all of those promises. The Lord Jesus shows us we can put our faith in the rock solid word, which is good because I'm guessing you've had your fair share of run-ins with people who have went against their word. You've had your fair share of people who have broken their promises, you have seen what happens, and you know the feelings that you had inside when that happened to you. Not with God. God will never break his promise. He will never go against his word, because his word is rock solid. Amen. Please stand. And now may the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, guard and keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Ordinarily, we'll be taking our offering at this time, but we obviously haven't been doing that for a few weeks. 
The offering plates are placed at each of the aisles, so if you have not worshiped the Lord with your gifts as of yet, you may do so as you're exiting church today. In our special prayers today, we keep our dear friends in Christ, Carla Lemke, Brian Young, as well as Jim and Connie Bradley. Jim and Connie are celebrating their 49th wedding anniversary. Brian Young, he is now recovering of COVID-19, which is good news because he was in pretty grim stage, but now they're looking to hopefully release him back to his home very soon. And then Carla Lemke, she is de still dealing with uh, a decline in her health, so we ask the Lord to watch over her during these times. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Lord of power and grace, whose eyes are on the righteous and whose ears are attentive to their cry, hear the prayer of your people who now come now in thankfulness for all the mercies that you pour down on us anew each day. We thank you for the gifts of providence. Make us mindful, O Lord, that you have provided us with life, breath, and being and are the source of our daily bread. We praise you for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, whom you sent to be the Savior of the world. Grant that we may believe in him with all our hearts, learning from him the great truths of the kingdom to which he bore faithful witness. We pray for the nations of the earth, subdue terror and tyranny everywhere, and call forth leaders who acknowledge that you are the Lord over all the earth. Bless our own land, and may it ever follow the which is good, and turn from all that is wicked, that all our people may prosper in uprightness and integrity. And also hear our prayer, O Lord, as we cry out for those who are afflicted, grant them health in body and soul, and save them for your mercy's sake. Dear Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for granting recovery to Brian Young. We ask that you would complete his recovery, that he may be able to go home after suffering the pains and sickness of the virus. We also ask you, dear Lord, to look with favor on Carla Lemke. As she is wandering through the valley of the shadow of death, be with her, guard her, protect her, and comfort her during these difficult times. And rejoice with us, dear Lord, for the blessings that you have given to Jim and Connie Bradley as they celebrate this Friday, their 49th wedding anniversary. Throughout all the joys and sorrows of their life, help them continue to build upon you the rock of their marriage upon which all blessings flow. We ask these and all other acceptable petitions in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, and now ask you to hear us as we bring you our private petitions. Guide and uphold us during our pilgrimage in this world and bring us all to our heavenly home. Receive these petitions in the name of, our, of the Prince of Life, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we also join our hearts and voices together as we pray the prayer that Jesus has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated as we join to sing our next hymn, which is hymn 382, My Hope is Built on Nothing Less.
Blessed Lord, you have given us your holy scriptures for our learning. May we so hear them, read, learn, and take them to heart, that being strengthened and comforted by your holy word, we may cling to the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you, be gracious unto you. The Lord look on you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. May be seated for our final hymn. Good evening again and welcome. We do have a number of Bible studies that are available to you if you have not uh, heard of them yet. Our Tuesday morning Bible study, we're going through the life of David. And so it's been a very interesting study thus far. We're into David the giant killer. And so we're going to conclude that lesson this upcoming Tuesday. And we will move on to our next lesson probably uh, in our next session as well. You also have a Wednesday evening Bible study, which topic it will be wrapping up shortly. We are in a good discussion right now on the uh, topic of abortion, as well as end of life and beginning of life and when life begins and so forth. And it has been a great discussion on Wednesday evening. So if you want to get a part of that, uh, by all means, come at 6.30 on Wednesday. And then we, uh, except for this coming Sunday, we'll be having our study on Joel. We have just gotten into the first chapter of Joel, and we'll be looking to start our second chapter, uh, not this Sunday, but the Sunday to come. So if you are interested in any of those opportunities, by all means, uh, and if those don't work, uh, you ha now, as many of you are aware, have Pastor and I on demand. You can get our smiling faces whenever you'd like on our YouTube channel, so please, if you have the internet and use YouTube and you need uh, a pick-me-up or, or just the Word of God at any given time, click on our videos and, and hear the Word of God and be blessed by that as well. God's Word.